Hello, welcome to this screencast on free vibrations of undamped systems. This is part of the course Dynamics and Control of Mechanical Systems. When we look into free vibrations of an undamped system, the equations of motion uh, look like this. So as you see, we have uh, no damping in the system, so only mass and stiffness, and the forces are zero, so then we'll speak about free vibrations. If we can talk about synchronous motion, then all generalized coordinates in the system have the same time dependence. And if this is the case, we can apply separation of variables, which says that we can write the generalized coordinates as a product of two functions, a function f of time and a function u, which is um, a column of constant amplitudes. So it is a function of uh, a space, in fact. If we substitute this expression of separation of variables in the equation of motion, then we find the following. We find here a term with f double dot divided by f, and then mass times the u and stiffness times the u is zero. This expression we can rewrite in the following way. So on the left hand side we have the f's and on the right hand side on the right hand side here we have uh, written these matrix expressions as a summation over the index j and then this equation holds for all the indices i 1 to n. So if you look carefully at this equation you will see that the left hand side is independent of the index i, so it's independent of position in fact, and the right hand side is independent of time. The only way, if you think about it, the only way these two quantities can be equal is if they are equal to a constant. This constant we call lambda, so we say these uh, two quantities are equal to lambda. And then we find two different equations. The first equation is a second order ordinary differential equation, ODE, in time, as you see here, so f double dot plus lambda f is zero. And the second equation is a set of n algebraic equations. And if we go back to a uh, matrix uh, column notation, we find this expression so that uh, ku must be equal to lambda mu, and this is what we call the generalized eigenvalue problem. First, we will look into the ordinary differential equation. So the way to solve this kind of equation here is to test a possible solution, and one possible solution is what you see on the screen, c times e to the power of st. If we substitute this in the uh, differential equation, first we find this and I, if we continue to work we conclude the following. Since c and e to the power of st are not zero, they could take any value, then the only way this equation can be uh, fulfilled is as s squared plus lambda is zero. And from here we find that s is plus minus the square root of minus lambda. For the systems we are considering, where the mass and stiffness matrix are real, symmetric, and positive semidefinite, lambda is a non-negative real number. Next thing is to define lambda is equal to omega squared, as you see here where omega is also a real and non-negative number, then s is plus minus j omega. If we go back to the solution of the ordinary differential equation, we see that is, if lambda is zero, then f is a linear function of time, 
and these constants depend on the initial conditions. The other option we have is that lambda is larger than zero and then we see here that f can take the form you see on the screen. So c1 e to the power of j omega t plus c2 e to the power of min j omega t. And this is a harmonic function, so we can write it like this or like this. And all these constants you see here depend on the initial condition. And as I said, these functions are different representations of harmonic motion. I would like you to realize that all we know at this point, after solving the ODE, is that the response is a harmonic oscillation. So if we take the system out of the equilibrium and we let loose, this solution tells us that the system will start to oscillate. That's all we know. But what we don't know is what is the frequency of this oscillation. And to find this out, we need to solve the eigenvalue problem. So the solution of the eigenvalue problem will tell us what the frequency of this oscillatory uh, motion is. Let's look into that. The generalized eigenvalue problem consists in finding a column vector, column vector u and a scalar lambda such that the expression you see on the screen is fulfilled. Obviously, there is a very easy solution, which is the trivial solution, and that is that u is zero. But we are looking, of course, for all other solutions. And in order for this equation to be fulfilled for u is not zero, then the determinant of a k minus lambda m should be zero. So the first thing we need to do is solve for this determinant and find lambda. So normally we will find a polynomial of nth order in lambda and the roots of this uh, polynomial are the lambda r which are equal to the omega r squared. And this omega r are what we call the natural frequencies or eigenfrequencies of the system. And we will always find the same number of eigenfrequencies or natural frequencies as number of degrees of freedom the system has. Once we have found the omega r, the next step is to determine the eigen columns. In order to find ur, we substitute omega r in the expression of the generalized eigenvalue problem and we solve for ur. What we find is what we call the eigen columns, which are also called um, characteristic columns, eigen modes, natural modes, uh, modal columns. You will find them with many different names. The most important thing about them is that they are not unique. If we think about ur as a vector, then this means that uh, solving this equation gives us the direction of these eigenvectors, but the magnitude is not um, determined. And another way to say that is that if we multiply an eigencolumn with a scalar, that will be the same eigencolumn. It is an eigencolumn too. Let's look into this with an example. Let's take the half car model for a car. A half car model looks like this. We take a mass and then we model the front suspension with a spring damper uh, element and the rear suspension with another spring damper element. 
in 2D, it looks like you see on the screen. And this picture is coming from example 3.7 in the mechanical radiations book. If we define these two points P and Q on the sides of the mass, we can define the generalized coordinates Q1 and Q2, which are the vertical displacements of P and Q. Then you find the mass matrix and the stiffness matrix you see on the screen. And to solve the iron value problem, what we do is use MATLAB and we use the function i. These two lines here are code lines uh, from a MATLAB script. So this is typically what you will write. And the capital U uh, is a matrix with the eigen columns in the columns. And lambda is a diagonal matrix with lambdas in the diagonal. And since we know that omega is the square root of lambda, then we need to write this to retrieve our omegas. If we do that, we will find these two values for omega, omega 1 and omega 2, and the corresponding eigencolumns are u1, which is 1, 1, and u2 is minus 1, 1. If we put them in a matrix, then we will find the matrix u of eigencolumns with u1 in the first column, 1, 1, and u2 in the second column, minus 1, 1. If you look in the book, you will see that the numbers there are different. But uh, still, you see that the, in the first mode, the two coordinates have exactly the same amplitude. And in the second mode, they have the same amplitude, but with different sign. How do these modes look like? For the first mode, we see that both ends of the uh, mass have the same amplitude. So the vibration that corresponds to this mode is a vertical oscillation. While for the second mode, they have the same amplitude but with different signs. So the corresponding vibration for this mode is a rotation, in fact. So these are the two modes of the half car model. And this concludes this uh, presentation about free vibrations of undamped systems. Thanks for watching and see you next time.